early learning, offering no-cost child care in Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Wednesday to you. I hope that you're having a great start to your day. You're tuning in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I'm your host, Kobila Jones, and my guest is running just a little bit late, so I'm going to give you a few announcements until <clears throat> they get here. Um, as many of you may know, um, KLEK hosts an annual, well, this will be our second year hosting, well, our third year, actually, sorry, hosting our annual Kwanzaa celebration. It is going to be December the 28th, which is on a Saturday, and this year's theme is Dashiki Day Party. Um, every year when I pick a theme, it has a purpose, and so dashikis play a role, have a relevance in the African American culture, and so there will be a presentation about the birth, I guess you say, of the dashiki and how it transitioned to um, the African American culture, and so I hope that you all can join us for that, and then there will also be some food and some games um, as well. I'm trying to make this a very engaging and entertaining um, event and it's a day party so it's going to be 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. or uh, you know however long we go and so also during that time um, there will be some awards given out the KLEK ambassador team will give out some awards to some of our community partners and so I don't have all that I have all that information that is um, ran by Miss Allie J and so she is in charge of all of that and so um, as time it's close she will release more information about that portion of the event but again the <clears throat> KLEK Kwanzaa Dashiki Day Party will be December 28th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and this will be at the ASU Pavilion which is on A Street 2605 A Street and so we hope that you the community can come out and support us now we are asking for donations of children's socks on newer t-shirts last year we donated to a local shelter women's shelter and so we're gonna do that again this year um, I don't think oftentimes we you know think about some of the items that families need when they're on the go they have to leave a situation in a hurry they don't always have time to pack every single thing they need so I know socks t-shirt underwear some things that kids can never get enough of you know if there are any of you that are parents out there so you already know so please join us on December 28th from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, also we would have a Kelly K chili cook-off um, that is coming up November 1st and so this is going to be hosted by well I say hosted by but um mainly ran by brother Bernard Cobbs and so this is one of his projects and we'll definitely give you more information about how to sign up I will let you know the sign up for that I think it's October 29th and so uh, please go to www.klekfm.org for more information and to actually register so all of the details are there the prizes and the rules so all right my guest has arrived all right so we're joined by you can try to scoot up a little closer to the table um mr adrian everett and Ms. veronica uh-huh okay i'm gonna have to write that down <laughs> before i mess it up thank you all for joining us this morning they're here to talk about the asu transport what is it transfer student is a program department uh well <laughs> oh, i'm gonna turn the mic on okay it, we're not really a department of our own um, we just blend across multiple departments on campus okay and service all transfer students okay let me see talking that mic again let me make sure i got you on the right mic yes ma'am this is adrian okay okay all righty then so let's go ahead and get right into what um first give us a little background about the transfer student you know department and then tell us about the tailgate that's coming up all right so i'm adrian everett i'm the new uh, director of transfer student services at arkansas state university 
Uh, basically, the transfer student is any student that has attended another university prior to applying to A State, uh, whether that's a two year institution or a four year institution. Um, all students that have at least 13 hours um, prior to um, attending A State and since graduating um, from high school, um, they're considered a transfer student. Okay, awesome. And so, first of all, congratulations on the uh, getting that position because you were in the advising center. Advising yes, center. Yes, I've been in. Um, I'm actually housed in the office of admissions now. Um, since transfer students, it involves recruiting. Um, so our enrollment management um, has restructured our admissions office, and um, so that's why I moved over to the admissions office and now work with all the transfer students. All right, awesome. And so, and we're joined by. Uh, my name is Veronica Duarte. I work for Global Engagement and Outreach, and we kind of are joined together to plan this event for transfer students. Um, and with the help of Adrian, we've been able to contact all of the two-year um, institutions in our system to invite them, along with reaching many other people who are interested. That's awesome. And so what are some of the activities that, you know, people can expect at the tailgate? <laughs> um, so we'll have some food to give them, of course. Um, uh, Adrian's team will be offering some tours for all of the transfer students throughout the entire event so they can get a little bit more of a feel. Um, the chancellor will be there um, okay. greeting um, and all the other uh, chancellors from the other institutions are going to come and be recognized on the field um, during the game um, along with a giveaway that we're going to have um, we're going to offer some clear bags for students so that they can bring their stuff inside the game um, and the biggest thing that we're going to do is just let them feel the a-state atmosphere okay and hopefully once they come on campus, hopefully once they just step foot on campus, they feel welcome and uh, decide, okay, this is where I want to be. <laughs> yes, that's the ultimate goal. Um, so this event is not limited to students. Um, this event is limited to the administration, faculty, and staff um, that are at our um, two-year community colleges, not just within our system, um, but our surrounding community colleges. So we've invited um, all 22 community colleges in Arkansas, as well as a couple from out of Arkansas to this event. Um, this is the second year we've done this, and last year it was a great success. Um, we had um, around 300 people attend the event last year, um, and as of today, we've already had over 300 that are registered for the event. So um, it's a great, great networking opportunity for um, our A-State employees as well as our students to um, come out, meet with the um, potential prospective transfer students from the other universities, and um, also for our faculty and staff to network and talk to um, the two-year schools, administration, faculty and staff about, you know, programs that they would like to see us maybe offer, maybe talk about class opportunities, um, how they teach things, and just you know, a just big social event for um, all of our transfer students and our partners. Awesome. So you said you had, what, over 300 already registered? Mm -hmm. So who was That was who, last night we had over 300 <laughs> registered. So who was going to man all these people? Like, it's only two of you here. Like, yeah, it's only two of us here. <laughs> However, um, so as Veronica mentioned, we'll have food, um, burgers, and hot dogs. Um, the Baptist Collegiate Ministry uh, has volunteered a team. Okay. Um, that's going to do the cooking for us. Um, we have a number of volunteers from different academic departments. Um, the tours, as she mentioned, will be done by our A State Chancellor okay. Ambassadors, um, which are students. Um, we have we'll have shuttles that will transport the students from the the First National Bank Arena to the Welcome Center on campus. Okay. Um, and those are some other volunteers we have. Um, so it's a partner event for sure from okay. the A-State Global Engagement and Outreach um, team um, to the A-State Admissions team. Um, so it's multiple behind the scenes okay. um, <laughs> people that have been involved in this process for sure. And a big part has been athletics. They've been absolutely amazing. Yes. Um, helping us secure tickets, helping us get you know the chancers on the field. Um, they've been really great to just work with us because they want these students to feel the atmosphere of a football game. Mm -hmm. um, and I can't thank them enough for all their help for this event. And that, I mean, that, we're extremely appreciative um, from Terry Mahodger and 
Carlos McCants um, for their um, contributions to this event because um, obviously the, t the football game is the whole experience. <laughs> yes. the, the food is kind of the extra addition to the t again, experience, but um, I mean, everyone is excited about, you know, a Thursday night game, the opportunity to be on TV. It's a televised wow. game tomorrow night. A really big, important game for us against Louisiana Lafayette as well. Um, so, I mean, it just brings in um, some people that have never been to Jonesboro. Um, we have um, people that will come probably from Central Arkansas area, um, our ASU BB campus, ASU Mountain Home campus. Um, so, I mean, they've, they've rented buses and they'll be, you know, chartering in, bringing in vans. The other cool thing about tomorrow is um, there's a community college um, intramural flag football tournament that will be hosted during the daytime um, in connection with our A-State intramurals program. And so um, all those athletes that are coming in to compete with that will um, they'll compete, play, and then they'll come over to the tailgate and then go to the game. Um, so it's a four day experience for them. Um, so that's, we're really excited about that. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, and parking has been taken care of by athletics again by Kaysen. So, I mean, they have just joined with us to make this a seamless process mm -hmm. along with all the other departments that are helping. Way to go, A State Wolves up. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It's a great, great opportunity. I was, I just came back from a, um, a state conference for community colleges in Little Rock, and um, I was bragging about this event that we host, and um, the other four-year schools were in all like, like y'all bring in people, like y'all yeah. take care of their tickets, take care of their food, like how many people do y'all have? They're like, we've tried this before, and we didn't have any people, and I was like, well. I guess we're, we're very fortunate. Um, <laughs> okay. People want to come see the Red Wolves fly too, you know. <laughs> we're, we're, we're doing pretty well. Um, so it's it's a great program that's very unique from all the other four-year schools. I hope that the other schools could take some notes and figure out what you're doing right and adjust their program or their oh, it's okay. We'll, we'll just continue. You know, we like to stand out. <laughs> we're going to continue to dominate. <laughs> well, we like this event. It's, it's done well for us. Um, Veronica was talking to our chancellor, who's very hands-on. Um, this e idea was created last year okay. um, from, a, I think it was a system perspective from Dr. Welch's office. Um, and there's a task force of um, our ASU system as well as um, the community colleges with A-State on there as well. And they were just talking about, you know, getting their students and their administration on our campus more. And, you know, what better way to involve them and bring them in for a football game and, you know, show them everything we have to offer. So we're, we're excited about um, this being the second year that we've done this and hopefully to continue growing this event. Amen. I want to go back to Veronica. Tell us more about your department. I have never heard of uh, that department. So for those that are listening who also don't know. <laughs> um, so global engagement and outreach, there's a couple of different areas under us. So online programs is going to be under GEO. Okay. Um, study abroad, international programs. Um, and then we also partner extremely heavily with transfer. Okay. Um, so all of the events that we do on campus, um, you know, Adrian and I will get together and plan and execute those events together. Okay. Um, just because it's kind of we're both kind of connected to those students and putting on those events. Um, both of our bosses work extremely closely together. So his boss, Brian Terry, um, and then my boss, um, Dr. Thilla, he is really amazing at okay. just, you know, having us work together as, you know, so that we can put on these amazing events. It definitely involves partnerships. That's the great thing about okay. it. Um, <laughs> we can't do these things alone. Um, as you mentioned in the beginning, because it's so much, you know, small details. Just on the drive up here, Veronica and I are talking about this is what we need to do that. This is what we need to do that. <laughs> like, you know, I, I slept like three hours last night. Oh I was sending goodness. out emails to, you know, final updates to people. And then, you know, we'll send out a mass final update to all the people that have registered for this event at some point today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and just, you know, there's so many small details to go into planning an event that it, um, you definitely need multiple people involved in it for sure. I can attest to that. Yes. And, and this is my first year at A-State. Like, oh. honestly, I've only been here a couple months and Adrian um, has just been so helpful because there's some small things that I honestly wouldn't even know about without, you know, having his 
expertise on. So it's been really great to work. And also, um, although he's not here, Chris, Sally, he, um, he also helps mm -hmm. a lot. He's been really great behind the scenes, getting a lot of stuff done for us as well, so. And we're fortunate enough to have, you know, um, a graphic designer that, you know, has helped with our um, publications, which are amazing. Okay. Um, Ryan Rains is his name. Um, he, I mean, I'm not very critical or anything, and Veronica's not very critical. However, you know, we'll look at something and we'll be like, how much do this, Ryan? How much do this? <laughs> and he's just so diligent. Yeah, I'll do it. And it's like right away. Um, and so, you know, we it's it's literally a full team um, from beginning to end um, to make this event happen. Um, another cool thing we have um, started for our transfer students on campus that goes back to our partnership is, um, so we want to increase the transfer enrollment at okay. ASA in general. Um, obviously, that's been a big emphasis for um, us within the last couple of years. Um, but this year, over the summer, we've hired um, some part-time employees um, that are housed at many of the different community colleges here in Arkansas. And so that's going to play a big role for us in that um, we have ASA employees that are there on those different campuses um, at different places around Arkansas. And so not only do they get to hear from me as um, the Director of Transfer Services as well as um, an ASA online recruiter, but there is also um, an actual face on their campus every week, um, every day, wow. uh, for so many hours that it talks a state language. Um, so that's, that's been great for us, um, and we're hoping it um, will pay off uh, for us and help it increase the enrollment of transfer students at the university. Absolutely. And that's been a partnership from GEO as well. Okay. Um, Chris and I um, work together to, you know, hire these employees as well as train these employees and we work with them on a daily basis literally <laughs> um, through email phone <laughs> phone call text message um, they are very engaged group that we've hired um, and you know they're they're all in a state um, some went to a state at some point okay. some have graduated from those community colleges that they're working at um, some are looking to continue um, degrees um, through a state and so um, there are representatives um, that are at these um, community colleges. And that's another different thing that um, A-State's doing compared to everyone else. So that you're actually literally boots on the ground in these different places. Mm -hmm. You're not just, well, once a semester and once a you no. know, special occasion. You're actually- We're there every day. <laughs> in your and currently we have, just to now the list, I hope I don't forget out anyone, we have um, a staff member at ASU Newport in Newport okay. um, that works between um, all their three campuses. Um, we have someone at EACC in Forest City. Um, we have someone at, obviously, ASU BB, ASU Mount Home, um, ASU Mid-South, um, Kodo, which is our new system school, um, effective January 1, there'll be ASU Three Rivers, which is down in Malvern, Arkansas. Um, it's south of Little Rock. And then we also have employees at um, South Arkansas Community College, which is down in El Dorado. Um, and we're looking to hire um, a couple others. Um, we're just trying to get some leads on staff members at those different places. Okay. And so we're, we're pretty much all over the state. Um, the only area that we haven't touch, I would say, area-wise is Northwest Arkansas, but that is um, something that we want to have. Um, Some more past Little Rock up in that, those mountain uh -huh. areas. Definitely in the, in the, in the, in the Northwest you know, Central those territory. Those Razorbacks go come for you. Oh, uh, it's fine. They come for us, so, you know, we'll send somebody there. I was fortunate at this conference yesterday to talk to one of the um, NWAC graduates. Uh, which is a big community college in Northwest Arkansas, and um, she's a student there, non traditional, and she was pro A state. Um, and you know, I was talking to her. She was their is their top award recipient, um, their academic scholar, and she was saying how you know, yes, I went to NWAC. However, you know, there's a lot of people that don't want to go to U of A. Um, so she's like, we want more representation over here in Northwest Arkansas. So I stressed to her that you know, we're trying to hire somebody, literally. Uh, we would like to, for them to have, you know, Spanish-speaking background um, because that's a big population um, in the Northwest Arkansas Territory. 
Um, but, you know, we're, we're wanting to put a part-time employee in Northwest Arkansas. So, any leads out there, um, feel free to send them to me. My email is aeffort at astate.edu. And um, we're definitely actively trying to grow that population. All right, well, I have to get you connected with our sister station, WDIV, yeah. out in Fayetteville, Arkansas. So shout out to Randy we, if you're listening. Yeah, we, we would love to actually, you know, maybe come and do an interview over there. Um, right. KLEK is always on the go for us, but uh, we have a high school recruiter that's always in the area. So if there's opportunities to, you know, do radio broadcast in that area, let us know. Right. We want to be all over the United States, not just Arkansas. We want to have right. Arkansas on the, on the, on the wraps for sure. Okay. Um, so. All right, so with this, I'm going to get ready for break. So we thank you all for joining us for the first part. So stay tuned. We have more discussion to come, Mr. Adrian. And you're going to stick around with this work. All right, so uh, stay tuned to more community conversations. I want to say good morning to DeAngelo Bullard and Melissa Jackson. Everyone who's just checking in. Make sure the video get ready for the Transfer Student Tailgate. Tomorrow we'll have more information when we come back. <laughs> You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. Is money keeping you from going on a date with your spouse? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. The family budget may be tight right now. There are braces to pay for, a car that needs to be fixed, and electric bills that need to be paid. Being tight on money may mean giving up certain things, but it should never mean giving up on your dating life. Think about what your spouse really wants from a date. Maybe it's not just another restaurant for dinner or an overhyped movie. Maybe it's simply romantic time with you. So here are some great date ideas that won't break the bank. First, find your favorite spot outside and watch the moon come out. Second, take a walk somewhere along the water, a beach, or a nearby lake. Remember, your family first. Want to connect with Mark on Facebook? You can at facebook.com slash Mark Merrill. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A 1908.com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. When is the best time to talk to your family about staying in touch during a disaster? When floodwaters reach your door? When wildfires are engulfing the edge of your neighborhood? Or an earthquake is destroying buildings? Or is the best time perhaps today? During a disaster, you may not be able to stay in touch with your family or friends as easily as you think. Go to ready.gov slash communicate and make your emergency plan today. Don't wait. Communicate. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. Help keep Kelly K on the air. Give now through our fall fund drive. We are seeking 100 donors to give at least $20 per month. But we are happy with any gift, large or small. Come by our studio at 1411 Franklin Street in Jonesboro. Call us at 870-277-1080. Or visit our website, klekfm.org. Or you can use Cash App, dollar sign KLEKFM. Or text KLEK1. Send it to 44321. KLEK thanks C.J. Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street, phone number 1-866-972-1268, or online at lscihelp.com. The key to making this station even better could be parked in your driveway right now. Donate your old car to us, you'll get a tax deduction, and we'll tow it away for free. Go to klekfm.org for more information. 
My name is Dale Pazinski, and this is how I live United. I volunteer with United Way, helping the homeless in my community by teaching computer skills and helping them build a basic resume to save on their very own USB drive. It's huge when somebody says, hey man, that job that you helped me apply for, I got it. My name is Dale Pazinski. I help people achieve financial independence. So I don't just wear the shirt, I live it. Give, advocate, volunteer, Live United. Go to liveunited.org. Brought to you by United Way and the Ad Council. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. All right, so for part two, I am joined by some members from the social, work department, social work department. All right, so we have uh, Caitlin Bradley. Uh, Sheila Clay and Mr. Christopher Adams. Thank you all for joining us. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. Okay, so everybody's mic seems to be working so far. <laughs> uh, speak Adrian. Yes, this is Adrian. <laughs> all right, so that one. So sorry, Veronica's mic is not working. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get right into our conversation. We're going to be talking about the fall festival that's coming up uh, to be held at Parker Park Community Center. So before we get right into that, if each of you could go around and give us an introduction, those of you that are new to the table today, Give us an introduction of yourself and, you know, what role you play. Are you a student, teacher? Uh-huh. Okay, awesome. My name is Sheila Clay. I am the supervisor over A-State Care. Okay. And I am a master's social work student. Oh, my God. God bless you. Yes, <laughs> yes. I manage five interns for the Bachelor's of Social Work program. Oh, my God. And they are amazing. Wow. <laughs> this has been exciting. So you're working on your master's while managing undergrads. Yes. Oh my goodness. And a single mother of two. <laughs> okay. Bless you. Oh, <laughs> yes. Very rewarding. Mr. Christopher? Yes, I'm Christopher Adams. I'm a student at Arkansas State University. I'm in the social work department and uh, I'm a part of A-State Care, which is a very great uh, nonprofit organization and I enjoy working with my colleagues and as well as Ms. Sheila and uh, it's been a great experience. I'm a graduating senior as I, as I said. When are you graduating? I graduate next year in May of 2020 right. and I look forward to doing many things in the field of social work and I also look forward to the master's program as well. So have you, is it possible to even start studying for your license before you start? It is possible. Okay. Actually, my professors have been talking about that practice uh, classes next semester. So I look forward to that because I really need to pass that exam. <laughs> <laughs> so. um, I will say I've, many people that I've known that have taken it. I mean, they've had some ups and downs with it, but don't beat yourself up. And yes. Best of luck to you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. And Ms. Caitlin. Yes. Yeah, so I am also a senior social work major um, okay. graduating in May. And I am one of the interns for A State Care. And a little bit about A State Care it's a um, community development um, nonprofit organization. So we put on events like um, the Fall Festival and some other events that we'll have throughout the semester. Um, we just want to make Jonesboro a better place for all people. I'm very familiar with A State Care. The organization has been around, I know, a good 10 plus years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been around yes. for a while. Because um, I was a student my second time around, like in 2003. <laughs> so I remember it from back, even from back then, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so from what I am familiar with now, within just the past three years, there have been many events that you mm -hmm. all have hosted yes. to really engage with the community. So tell us about this fall festival that's coming up and what can people expect? Um, we're just bringing the community together. It's going to be... Uh, places like uh, churches, um, we're going to have a lot of games, a lot of food. It's just about bringing the community together, mm -hmm. which is what social work is about, you know, linking uh, our people to com different community resources and things that are out there. Will there be any type of informational tables or community um, organization with, with tables set up? Yes, there will be some tables set up, okay. yes. Can you give us some idea of what type of information or other services might be present? Um, uh, the services, uh, more than likely, we're doing like um, Family Inc. Okay. Basically, more like mental health. Okay. Um, we want to just open up that opportunity for those that do not know, and why not this population? Okay. Um, uh, it's also good because we're actually bringing the community together, and we didn't do that by ourselves. The local churches, mm -hmm. oh my wow. goodness, when I tell you, 
it's amazing. The local restaurants, it's amazing. When I tell you the outpour of support and help that we have putting this on, it, it's it's just been amazing. It's been overwhelming. Mm-hmm. I'm so excited. I'm just hoping that everyone will come out yeah. and be a part. That's awesome. And so give us the date, time, and location so that people can mark the calendars. Yeah, so it is this Saturday, the 19th, um, from 11 to 2. Okay. And it is at Parker Park, which is on Church Street. Okay. And so we all know how events go at Parker Park. You better get there early to get a parking spot. <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> Don't wait until the last minute. And definitely get there early enough to get you some food. So can you tell us? You want to give a shout out to some of your sponsors or maybe restaurants? I have to give a shout out to Dr. Taylor. She has been a Dr. very Evie Taylor. Yeah, okay. she's been a big inspiration <laughs> to Power us. One and yes. two. We got First Baptist on Kitchen Street. Oh yeah, oh yeah. We got Word Baptist in the house. We also we have Nettleton Baptist in the house. <laughs> <Okay>. Oh yeah. <laughs> <coughs> we got ASU Social Work Department in the house. Mm-hmm. We got Alpha <laughs> by Alpha in the house. We have uh, Masters as well as the Bachelors of Social Work Organization. Mm-hmm. They are in the house as well. We oh, have good. so many people. We have Lost Pizza. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. They're donating food. Yeah, they're donating a lot of the pizzas um, for the event. As well as um, the U-Haul um, company here in town. Uh, we'll have our famous hay rods that we always do. Um, so they're going to donate trailers for us. And the uh, Creek County Judge's Office um, is donating a trailer as well. And then ASU Farm is going to donate all of the hay for the hay rods. Um, so we're very fortunate to have a lot of partners for sure. That is absolutely amazing. So please go out gather the kids together. It may be a little chilly, but get your jackets and scarves, you know. We're praying for no rain. No, no rain. rain. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All inclusive. We need prayer for no rain. Because <laughs> um, we'll have the game bus. Uh, First Baptist has um, taking care of the of renting the game bus this yeah. year. Um, we'll also have laser tag out there. We'll have um, the giant connect four. Um, we'll have obstacle courses. Um, there's going to be inflatables out there. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of a lot of fun for sure. So now you're to keep the big kids. Oh the yeah, it's, <laughs> there's something for everybody. Yeah, like yeah. you know. As an adult, I always look forward to this event um, because it's fun for me. Like, as an adult, it's like, I just enjoy the hay rides. Me being from the country, like, you know, riding on the back of a truck. And it's just, you don't get to do that here in the city. Um, so just being able to provide the city kids with something that you typically would do in the country, um, it's just a big enjoyment for me, for sure. You may be, I guess, working or manning for the day. Oh, man, we'll probably be all over the place. Yes, we'll be all over the place. We'll be there from 8 to 3 o'clock. So oh we're going to be cleaning up. We're going to be uh, getting the tables and things set up. And we're going to be doing a lot. So okay. it's kind of hard. To... But that's the life of a social worker, though. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. You, yeah. you yeah. never it's turn community. off. <laughs> you never yeah. turn off. <laughs> But it's a great, it's a great role. I'm fortunate to be married to one, and um, I've I've seen this event um, from their perspective a lot of times because Annie's had to help lead that in the past um, when she worked on her bachelor's as well as her master's. Um, she worked with that organization, so it's 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 very fulfilling for sure. Awesome. So, what are y'all most looking forward to, or do you have like different expectations that you had from last year, or? Just give us what are you, your thoughts and insight and your feelings about this event. So I got to go to the event last year and it was cool seeing it from the outside looking in okay. of, wow, this is bringing the community together. Um, and I got to just play a little part of that in volunteering. Um, but I think it's even cooler this year to be a part of it and to um, be planning and bringing all these resources together um, because it's like we get to play a hand in um, bringing resources to the community. And um, so it's gonna be really great to see um, all of that unfold because we've been planning for a while, but um, just being able to see um, people get the resources that they need and also enjoy their afternoon. Okay, will they uh, be able to take away more say goodie bags or um, bags with handouts and other things from the other agencies that are used for them? Yes, um, 
they're all providing candy. I wanted to piggyback on what she was saying because okay. we also have the local police department okay. come in as well as the fire department. And um, one of the things that I can take away positively from this is when the kids meet the police officers, they're able to sit in the front of the car rather than the back of the car. That's awesome. And they're able to understand that you're not, you don't have to be afraid of them. Mm -hmm. They're not the bad guys. They're here to protect. So I think while doing that, I think that, I mean, that's the most rewarding thing to do. And they're able to spend that family time. My most, I think I enjoy watching them eat and just have fun and be free and be kids. Right. Mm -hmm. Because when you get grown, it's not that easy. <laughs> <laughs> but this one day you get to have fun as an adult. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you'll, it'll be fun, I promise you. It's so much fun. That's awesome. So, Mr. Christopher, what, um, first of all, how many years have you attended then? You know, what are some of your expectations and thoughts and feelings about this event? Uh, I just look forward to seeing the community come out and I look forward to seeing the happy faces, look forward to seeing the children and you know it's just all about coming together and I've never like Miss Caitlin I've never uh, did a fall festival okay. before but you know I just look forward to seeing everything play out because we have worked hard on this so me and my other colleagues that are not present <laughs> we have worked hard on this so. Another cool thing, Ms. Wubela, is um, last year, the two groups, um, A State Care and the churches, did two separate ones. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the things that I'm happy that this year we were able to combine mm -hmm. and work together on this right. and just make it, combine our resources, put it all in one location. Because last year we rode by each other and it was just too late. We didn't realize that we were doing the same event mm -hmm. on the same day. Um, so this year we were able to, you know, work together and, you know, pull our, push our resources to something that they already have planned, um, on, on a great day, hopefully great weather. And it's all about community, bringing it together for right. sure. One, <clears throat> one big cause. And I hope that this resonates with every other member of the community and other organizations. Mm -hmm. We saw how big the back to school thing that was, um, spearheaded by VPN mm -hmm. and now this event this year you all decide because I attended First Baptist last year mm -hmm. um, the event last year and so I'm so happy that you all are coming together because it keeps people from having to go all over town and, and pick to, and choose which yes. one you want to go to <laughs> yeah so thank you all for coming together and making this a collab making this a collaborative event so thank you again it's yeah. no problem again community please go out give them that date time location again yeah so again it is this saturday the 19th at parker park which is at 1506 north church street all righty now i want to ask the students um since you are um going to be graduating in, in the social work department and moving on are you all first of all moving on to your master's or two when you attend these events do you kind of see things that you want to either work on in your career or try to are you in like in this still in the social work mode like how can I help to make things better different what role can I play in my community yeah so I will be going to grad school after I graduate okay. um, I'm very excited about that um, and I I definitely do I think that is the sole purpose of this event is to um, see what resources that we can meet um, past just the fall festival mm -hmm. and so um, I've definitely as my professors would say put on that social work lens of how can I be helping my community um, with whatever I'm doing instead of just like when I graduate okay. so yeah and I'm excited about grad school excited about um, being in the social work field all right, Mr. Christopher. Um, yes, I plan to go to grad school. At first, I just thought thought about taking a break, but I think that it's important that I keep going. My father has told me so many times, yeah, you need to get as much as education as you can while you're young. Yes. But uh, also, like Miss Caitlin, uh, I've been looking into uh, looking into continuing on with social work, and uh, I've been looking at it. Kind of helped me out. <laughs> I can't get my words together. The great thing about you guys being social work program students is that, I'm not going to say challenge you a little bit, is um, there's an opportunity at A-State to do the advanced program. Yeah. And, you know, 
I don't know if you guys have families already, married or anything, but I would encourage you um, just to grind it out. Uh, get that one extra year in there um, and get that master's degree because, I mean, your option, opportunities are unlimited to once you get your master's in social work. And so um, just once you get done with the bachelor's, I would say don't stop. Just keep the momentum going. Um, pass your <laughs> bachelor's <the> test um, <laughs> for sure because that's going to help you with your master's program and then also help you um, prepare for that master's level test that you'll have to take as well. And um, once you get that master's level social work degree, I mean, you can do anything. Like mm -hmm. I, I tell my wife, you know, I mean, our options are unlimited. I mean, there is so much you can do. Um, with that bachelor's and that master's degree in social work. So just continue on and, you know, get both those credentials and the workforce is definitely needed um, because there's so many options, whether it's counseling, hospital, medical, social work, um, community social work. There's so many options out there for you. Mm -hmm. Social workers are literally everywhere. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> the prison, job is never done. Mm -mm. Yes, in the prison system, or the justice system, I should say, the justice system, mm -hmm. the medical field, yes. school system, even mental health. Everywhere. Yes. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. And also with us working with, uh, with me and my colleagues working with Morningside and Aftercare, we have an aftercare program. This helped me to see social work too. Mm -hmm. Yes, because we're able to work with the children as well as the geriatric population. And I wanted to piggyback on the importance of going ahead and going to grad school. <laughs> just 10 days after I graduated, I was back in the front oh Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's rewarding. Like turning tassels. So, okay, take a break and here we go. That's <laughs> it. I knew if I took a long break, I would come back. <laughs> It's hard so for somebody that finished up a master's and they're like, you need a doctor. I'm like, ah, I enjoy working. <laughs> and I can tell you from a non-traditional student perspective, I finished my bachelor's late or in life. Um, but now I decided I'm going on with a master's. So and I didn't take another break. So if you can, while you have the youthful energy, <laughs> please continue. That's awesome. Because when you get to your 30s and then... It's hard. They are in line in my age bracket, then yeah, it gets a little like, do I want to do this? Yeah, so please, please continue. Please. And we need you all in the field. Um, and, you know, I want to say to Christopher, we need, especially black males in the mm -hmm. field, um, we, there needs to be representation of all people from all backgrounds. Yes. So please continue on. We want to see you out there working. Yes. <laughs> All right, so again, the Fall Festival is coming up this Saturday, Parker Park, 11 to 2. Um, please don't miss this wonderful event. Um, the weather is, I guess Arkansas is kind of embracing fall. I don't know, we, we don't know what the weather's going to do tomorrow, but hopefully there is no rain by this weekend. So everyone come out, you get to meet these wonderful people here and have a lot of fun, a lot of fun, actually. So... Who's gonna be driving the uh, well, one other thing I, when they all walked in, I knew Miss Sheila from around campus, but then Christopher, Christopher, right? Mm -hmm. Um, said he remembered me from Osceola, that was one of my schools that I recruited at back in the day, oh, wow. and then Caitlin was my making connections teacher, so it's like an old dad, you know, type <laughs> thing, like, oh my gosh, like I've been here forever, but it's very rewarding to see, you know, them be right at graduation. Um, to know that, you know, retention is working at A-State and that, you know, we're recruiting students, they're being successful, and then they're coming out and doing things for the community. Mm -hmm. So it's come full circle. So congratulations to all three of y'all for, <laughs> you know, you. going way beyond, not just starting, but y'all are at the finish line. <laughs> Um, but to answer your question, Kobila, um, so I'll be driving one of the hay rides. I always... Um, the county trailer is about 24 feet long um and so uh, i always drive it because i mean the heavy chevy can pull a little quite a bit um and i'd rather put the load on it since it's mine um than anybody else's um and we always accommodate probably 20 to 30 people on it at a time um, so I'll have one of the trailers in the end. Uh, one of my other brothers at church, uh, Mr. John Thompson, he's gonna drive one of the other ones as well um, that the U-Haul is gonna donate to us. And then 
we're looking for two other trucks so if anybody's out there that would like to participate in the hay ride on saturday we have a total of four trailers um but we're we're short of two truck drivers right now so reach out to Ms. Sheila or myself if you um, would like to you, you're legal you have a good truck that's going to pull um, a trailer and you'd like to participate in this community opportunity because it's it's very rewarding the kids um, last year there was an opportunity for a handicapped person um, to actually get on there and I feel like I'm about to cry now um, but they were able to get on the hayride um, with their kid and actually ride in their wheelchair and so it was just like, like that just is still emotional right now. Um, just being able to witness that for, for them. That's amazing. So we're going to take a quick break here. I want to give a shout out to Alexa, uh, Keith. I'm going to say that like Keandra and Nicole. She said, so excited. And y'all are doing great. We love they stay care in turn. I guess she's a user, baby. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for checking in. And Everyone, please stay tuned. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with more information. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. It must be time for summer travel. By all means, hit the road. But follow these tips to make sure your money comes home with you when you get back from your trip. Men should carry their wallets in a button pocket, whether breast or pants. Women should carry purses they can keep clasped closed with wide straps worn diagonally across their chest. If you have to make cash withdrawals while traveling, stick to bank ATMs, which are safer and more likely to have camera surveillance. Avoid accessing your bank's or credit card's websites or other sites with your financial information from hotel or public computers or on public Wi-Fi networks. And that call to your hotel room from the front desk saying they need your credit card number again, hang up and call the front desk back yourself. Or better, go to speak to the front desk clerk in person. That incoming call could be a trick to get you to give up your credit card number. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. First Baptist Church, 700 Kitchen Street, Jonesboro, Arkansas, Reverend Curtis Wilson, Pastor presents Fall Revival October 22nd through 24th. There will be prayer, praise, and worship each night at 7 o'clock p.m. Guest ministers are Reverend Harry Harvey III, Tuesday night, Reverend Wesley Anderson, Wednesday night, and Reverend Dan Freeman, Thursday night. Special music by the United Voices Gospel Choir of Arkansas State on Monday night. The public is invited to come worship. Starks Auto Plaza at 2829 Red Wolf Boulevard is a proud KLEK supporter, offering luxury pre-owned vehicles sold wholesale to the public. At Starks, we never say no. 870-203-9 Details at StarksAutoPlaza.com. Crowley's Ridge Development Council provides information, resources, presentations, workshops, and trainings for schools, community groups, churches, law enforcement, and others related to substance abuse prevention, anti-bullying, mental health, and suicide prevention. More information is available at CRDCNEA. Dot O-R-G. K-L-E-K 102.5 FM salutes small businesses. Small businesses promote local character and success, keeping money in the local economy, local jobs, entrepreneurship, community well-being, 
and so much more. Contact us today to learn more on how your small business could be featured on KLEK for as little as $25 per month. Shout out to Letitia Fox Rochelle and Foxy's fabulous accessories and independent paparazzi jewelry consultant. FoxySKB.com, Foxy's fabulous accessories on Facebook or 870-761-4323. If you're struggling to pay the mortgage, making home affordable is a free government resource that can make it easier. Call 888-995-HOPE or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. So as you can see, I have a studio full. All right. We have some social work students. And then we have um, Mr. Adrian from Transfer Students. Then we have Ms. Veronica down there. Wave to them. <laughs> <laughs> from Global Outreach. Okay. Did I, okay, what is it called? Globals? I don't, it's not Your name. zone? No, hers is not Oh, mine. Global Engagement and Outreach. Okay. GEO is right, their so thing. A-State is in the house. Go Red Wolves. Yes. And so there's several events that are coming up this week. We've got the Transfer Student Tailgate and we got the Fall Festival. So we're just going to go back around <laughs> the table and everyone share... Uh, insight on the different events and then you know your thoughts and feelings and so this is a fairly shorter segment so so with the transfer tailgate um, it's happening tomorrow night um, all students administration faculty and staff from any community college um, in Arkansas or outside of Arkansas is welcome to attend that event um, the tailgate will be from 4 until game time at 6 30 um, we'll be outside of the blue and green entrance of the First National Bank Arena. Uh, we want to remind everyone that it is a blackout game, so we encourage everyone to wear all black and that the university now has a clear bag policy. So make sure um, if you're bringing a bag that it's a clear bag um, that you're bringing in. And uh, we'll have hamburgers and hot dogs um, at this tailgate. Um, we'll have free tickets to the game. Um, so sign up. It's on the website. Go to astate.edu slash transfer. And there's a link to the application to register on there. And it's free to everyone. All right. So that's admissions.astate.edu slash register slash tailgate transfer tailgate yep so go check it out and um, hang out with the transfer student department and yes give me some potential students take a tour of a stay <laughs> all right all right and then we got the fall festival coming up this saturday yes uh we just encourage everybody to come out and enjoy all of the free food music fun family time and what i love the most about it is that we'll be bringing families together in one location for an awesome cause. Mm -hmm. So just come on out, bring your jackets, and put your little clinic in your uh, pockets <laughs> just in case. And um, just pray that it doesn't rain. I know, that's right. <laughs> There'll be food, fun, and some of everything in between for everyone of yes. all ages. All right, so Christopher and Miss Caitlin, any um, final words, shout outs, just your thoughts and feelings about what is it like being in the social work department? So tell us that. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, I love uh, the social work department and how it is um, just practically showing us what it looks like um, to engage in your community, especially with this internship, but also just what it looks like um, to be a social worker outside of school. And um, this is an op awesome opportunity that we've had um, just to be a part of our community. And we're super excited for it. And we would love for everyone to come out. Um, Hopefully we have enough hot dogs for everybody. We will. We will. We, last year we cooked over a thousand hot dogs oh, for our event really? last wow. year. Oh, and God. like I told Miss Sheila, we, we have donations from H2Q Barbecue as well. Um, I forgot to mention them earlier for hot dogs. Um, and then um, the First Baptist Church will be providing some additional hot dogs. So we will have plenty of hot dogs and pizza um, for everyone to enjoy. And again, it is um, this Saturday, the 19th. Mr. Christopher, your final thoughts and what it's like being a social work student? Um, I just <clears throat> look forward to this event. Um, bring, it's about, as we've already said, it's about bringing the community together. So I look forward to having fun with my colleagues and with the community, getting to know people, different people. Um, 
because I don't know who all to expect. There may be more than what we have, than who we have invited. Okay. And uh, also, um, it's been a pleasure to be in the social work department. I've enjoyed working with the students, my peers. I've enjoyed working with the professors, some cool professors, you know, preparing me for the field of social work. Yes, (laughs) Dr. Walls. Dr. (laughs) Walls is the head professor and uh she will test you and challenge you. (laughs) Also, I feel like we need to shout out our other ASIC care interns, Jody. Kiki and Dane, they yes. are the best, they can be the best, but they are awesome. Yes. I want to ask Chris for one question, not to pick on you, but um, still, what does it feel like for you to have representation, you know, and what does it mean to you to be that representation? Of social work? Yeah, a black male, because I know people get tired of talking about race, but unfortunately, it's still some things we deal with, and representation matters, so... I I think that it fits who I am. Okay. I am a minister, and I minister okay. minister is being a minister is about helping people. Okay. And so that's why I picked the field of social work because it's about it's about helping people. Okay. So um, so I'm confident that I picked the best field for myself. That's amazing. Uh, All right, well, Miss Sheila, in our last two minutes, any final words? Um. I just want to make sure that everyone comes out. This is very rewarding. Uh, we are able to get back and link up with more resources and um, just to speak about Christopher. Um, I think that once I knew that he was going to be an intern, mm-hmm. I was excited because for a change we would have a black male in a profession where he's helping, where he's, sometimes you tend to not see that in the light. But um, I think it's going to be an inspiration for every other little boy. Okay. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Thank you. And just because I want to turn the mic to Mr. Veronica. Hey, Veronica. To, <laughs> to get Thank some you. final thoughts here. Um, I just hope everyone comes out to our event, um, comes to the game. Um, and again, I'd like to thank the transfer department, the geo department, and all of athletics, including Carlos McCants. That's her boyfriend, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Got a shout out to love. No, we appreciate Los. We really do appreciate Carlos and Terry uh, Mahajer, who, like I said, he's always he allows his team to um, do what they need to do and contribute to this event every year. So, and we just appreciate the ASU system, Dr. Welch, um, for creating this idea and um, just pushing us to involve all of our um, transfer students and administration around Arkansas and beyond. So, as well as our specific bosses, Dr. Brian Terry, um, thank you for allowing me to, you know, serve in this role, and Dr. Thila Sivakuramaran, I believe is how you say it. I never say his last name. Thilla is what I call him. Um, and, of course, we can't leave out Dr. Kelly Danfis, who was a transfer student himself and yes. who was very engaged in everything. Yes. And shout-out to Nakaya Fields and Nakeja Fields. Those are my daughters. Oh, oh, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> well, we thank you all for joining us today. Hope everyone thanks plans to attend these events. Thank you, A-State, for all that you do for our community. And that's what we're here to help bridge the gap. Everyone have a great and blessed day. Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issue.